Poly videos, a ton of you guys asked me what camera I was using and, and how can you vlog your adventures and your trips and stuff like that. So today, I'm going to do that. I'm going to tell you guys all about it. Uh, but first, I've been dying to try something. Have you guys ever seen that shot where the camera is like under the skateboard? I've been looking for mounts for it, but I didn't like how they looked. So I'm just gonna try to gaff tape it. I think it'll probably work. You guys don't know what gaff tape is. It's like duct tape, but for photographers. All right, check this out. I just, uh kind of gaff taped it in place there. I think it's gonna work. I'm gonna go test it out real quick. So the point of today's vlog is to mainly answer questions that we got after the Thailand and Bali videos went up, which kind of revolved around which cameras do we use and how can you make vlogs too? Uh, which is really cool. I'm stoked that most of you are looking to film vlogs like ours. So first I'm gonna start with the list of all the gear that we use and kind of how we shoot it and whatnot. And then I'm gonna end with like a few tips on how to shoot, maybe like a few things that if you think about while you're vlogging to make your videos way better. All right, first up is what cameras we use. Uh, I can't really show you this camera. This is the camera that I use. It is also hot. So the main camera, the camera I use all the time is the Sony a7R 2 I don't have the a7R 3 yet, but I hope I will soon. Um, and on that camera is the 16 to 35 lens, which, Again, is on that camera, but it looks a lot like this. Which is the 35 millimeter lens from Sony, but it's pretty similar. And it has the Gorillapod coming off the bottom and the Rode VideoMic Pro coming off the top. Again, I can't really show you this. It's on, it's on this camera that I'm talking to. Okay, so that's our main camera, camera one. Uh, secondary camera, this guy. The Sony RX10 Mark III. I made a video before about this camera, and I made the video calling this camera the best travel camera that you could have, and I didn't even bring it on this trip to Bali and Thailand, and I regret it heavily. For most people, this is the camera that I think you should get. Uh, a DSLR is usually just too much. There's, there's interchangeable lenses, there's a lot going on. This camera can go pretty wide, 24 millimeters, and then it can zoom in to 600. And if you don't remember what that looks like, here's a clip from the video that I made before showing off this thing's zoom. Oh, here we go. And zoom in. Yes. <laughs> and zoom way the hell back out. Wow! That is crazy! And with zoom like that, you can pretty much shoot everything. When you are shooting handheld stuff though, you gotta hold it kinda further out because it's it's only 24 millimeters wide. So unless you want like a close up of your face, you gotta kinda hold it way out here. Uh, but it still looks pretty good. Good camera. This is the camera that I think most people should get. Camera number three. Uh, this is the Sony A7, whoa, no, it's not. This is the Sony RX100 Mark V. Uh, super pocketable camera. I have a little, I have a little, I have a little dork bag that I wear with it. I just put my camera in here and I have it on my hip. Morgan thinks that I look ridiculous, but I think it's practical. Now this camera is the camera that our last five vlogs were pretty much filmed on because my Sony a7R II got like a little splash on it in Thailand and it totally died, just blacked out. And it, it's because it got in 
under the flip screen, which I think is a weak point for this whole thing's waterproof ability. So this camera died on us like five days into the trip and this became our main camera. You can film your entire adventure, your entire trip on this camera. I know it looks small, but it's amazing. It uh, opens up to 24 millimeters, so decently wide, as wide as this guy, and it zooms into 70 millimeters, which is kinda, it's decent, it's not bad. It's nothing like this thing, but it's not bad. Uh, another benefit to this camera is that it has a flip up screen, so you can do, you can do selfies, and you can see yourself while vlogging, so you can kinda compose what's behind you. You know how all those times Morgan sneaks up behind me and is making faces behind the camera? I'd be able to see her if I had a flip up screen, but the a7R2, the RX10, none of these have flip up screen. Only the RX100 has a flip up screen. Okay, camera one, camera two, camera three. This is pretty much camera four. Uh, the GoPro Hero 5 Black. I've looked at the Hero 6. I don't think the differences between the two are worth upgrading. I'll probably wait until whatever they come out with next, either the Hero 7 or some new Hero. What I'd love to see them do is do what Sony did with their camera and move this camera bit to the middle. It drives me crazy that it's off to one side. Every time you're trying to kind of film something real straight on, you gotta look at this bit, not this bit. That's silly. And the very last camera is, ah, of course, the DJI Mavic Pro. This thing's insane. It's so little, it's, it takes up like one spot in any sort of normal camera bag. It's, look at this. It's pretty much the same size as a 70 to 200. That's crazy that in your bag, you, you're making a decision between, should I take another lens or should I take a drone? Take the drone. Every drone shot that you saw in all of Thailand and flying over our hotel in Bali, that's all this thing. Over the volcano, this thing. Okay, this is a ton of gear and you absolutely do not need this much gear to start vlogging. If you wanna just film some of your adventures, film your trip, I think this guy is like number one. RX100 Mark V is the main camera that you should buy. If you wanna step it up a little bit and you know that you're either gonna be swimming a lot or maybe go mountain biking, add the GoPro in, these two, awesome setup. The last like five days, hiking Mount Batur, uh, riding scooters around town, that was all GoPro. Uh, Mount Batur was filmed with this guy, some of this, a lot of GoPro. Uh, the last day, obviously, swimming around was with this thing, surfing was with this thing. Uh, all the walking shots were all done with this, so just cruising around filming her. So these three are a super awesome setup for any sort of vlog trip. Okay, I think that's it for the gear stuff. This is all the things that we use. Like I said, start here, maybe add in a GoPro, then move here, then move here then move to the big boy if you want to. Next up though, I wanna give you guys a few tips that will help you make your vlogs better. Things to think about while you're, you're out adventuring. The number one tip I have for you guys is to think about your day ahead of time a little bit. I know it sounds weird because you're on vacation or you're just out having fun, but if you just think about what's going on that day, your, your mind will kind of already start thinking of like, oh, I wanna film this or I wanna film that. And you'll kind of start planning shots ahead of time. In theory, you want a beginning, a middle and an end to your, your story, your vlog, right? So you want a little bit of an intro, the middle bit, which is the thing that you did that day. You either hiked the mountain or you went swimming or you, you did something. And then some sort of ending bit, either just a closing, a funny little thing, some way to just kind of cap it off for the day. And if you think about what you're doing that day ahead of time, just a little bit, I'm telling you guys, it helps a ton when you're actually trying to put that together later. You actually film for what you've already thought about as opposed to just pointing your camera at things and then seeing if you could make something from it later. Okay, the second tip that I have for you guys is the weird one. It's the one that I think most people are the most uncomfortable with when it comes to vlogging and it's it's talking to the camera. So you're walking down the street and you're, you're telling the camera what you're doing. You're saying, hey, well, now we're here at the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> it feels super weird. And talking to the camera in public really is weird. We just started doing it in our New York videos. We didn't do it at all in our honeymoon videos. And for us, those videos are super fun to watch. But as an audience member, as someone who doesn't know us or has never seen our vlogs before, when you watch one of those, it's like watching our home videos, you know, like you, you don't have a sense of what we were doing or where we were. We don't explain anything. You just see stuff. It seems like a small tip, but it is huge in watchability of your vlog. If you want someone to sit around for 10 minutes, you better tell them what you're doing. 
Uh, tip number three is shoot a ton. Shoot way more than you think you need because when you're editing later and you're trying to chop things together, you realize, ah, oh, I didn't shoot us walking out of the hotel and getting in the cab and then I never said where we were going or what we were doing. And when you don't do those things, you look back at your video later and it feels choppy. It feels like things are missing from your day. Okay, tip number four is count to five. Whatever clip it is that you're filming, have at least five seconds of something. So if you're gonna shoot maybe a plane going by outside the window, press record. One, two, three, four, five. Press record again. What happens a lot is people hit record, they'll film something quick and they'll hit stop really quickly. And then when they're editing later, they're trying to put something into place and they realize they need a four second clip, but when they pull that clip in, it's only two seconds. You might only need three seconds, but if you film five, you can cut it. You can't get more. So if, if you hit stop, it's, it's done. You're, you got no more video. Uh, tip number five is hold things steady. I know that's, that's a really simple tip, but it's really easy to, to walk around either holding it like this or trying to film like this. Add something like a grip on the bottom. Maybe it's a gorilla pod like we do on our big camera. Just that alone will help you hold things more steady. I usually hold things like up here, like right under the neck. I kind of just pinch it and I try to float my shots. At some point I might do a whole video on like tips and tricks on how to hold things steady, but I'm gonna give you guys a couple right now. So the one is is pinch high on, on the neck. The other is, it's called the ninja walk. And I do it behind Morgan all the time when we're in public. And I have I have my big camera and I got my, my gorilla pod underneath and I walk, I walk like this one. I know it looks ridiculous, but it takes a ton of the shake away from my shots. So if I was just walking and just taking steps, the camera would see every one of my steps. But if I walk like a little ninja and I use my arms as shock absorbers, it kind of stabilizes that shot out. It, gets, it makes it a little bit smoother. You ever had a big cup of hot coffee and you wanted to walk across the room with it and you pick it up and you look at it and you're just going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Do that with your camera. Pretend that your camera is a hot cup of coffee and it's all the way to the top. And as you walk, you're trying not to spill it. Do that. Tip number six is kind of a bonus tip, uh, but it's audio. Audio is more important than video. The thing is, you can watch bad video. If the video gets grainy or the video gets kind of funky or maybe blurry, you can still watch it. When the audio goes bad, it's unwatchable. If the audio is just popping and cracking or it's windy, it is almost unwatchable. You'll see in the Bali vlogs when the A7R2 went down and I was down to my GoPro and, and this guy, uh, this does a decent job of reducing some wind, but not all of it. So you'll hear like, <sighs> broke my heart. Uh, the main things to do are get some little fuzzies for your point and shoot. If you're gonna shoot with one of the big cameras, maybe put some sort of Rode mic on top. We use the Rode Video Mic Pro. It's awesome, I love that thing. Uh, yeah, but some sort of audio thing. The last tip is where do I get my audio for? So all the music that you hear in my vlogs is from Epidemic Sound, uh, epidemicsound.com. They don't pay me to say that. I just have looked everywhere online. Um, you want good music, you want quality music, and you want a huge selection, and that's what those guys have. Uh, it's super easy, you jump on their website, it's a subscription type service, and then I have access to every song that they have in their library. I think that's it. If you guys have any other vlogging questions or photography questions, hit me up. Uh, I will try to answer them as best as I can. And if you guys like this video, hit thumbs up. If you know somebody that has the same questions as you or is looking to get into vlogging, do me a favor, share this video with them. Uh, I'm trying to put this into video format so it can help as many people as possible. What else did I want to say? I don't know, that's probably it.